Thanks for staying with us. I'm Laura Ingram, in for Bill O'Reilly. And in the personal story segment tonight, keeping the Sochi Olympic Games safe. Two deadly suicide bombings in two days have killed at least 31 people in Volgograd, Russia. That city is 400 miles away from Sochi, where the Winter Olympic Games will kick off early next month. So the question tonight, should we be worried about the security of American athletes set to compete on February 7th? Joining us now from Boston, Dr. Michael Waller. He's a senior writer at the American Media Institute who focuses extensively on issues related to Putin and Russia. Uh, Dr. Waller, this are horrible uh, stories out of Russia, uh, and the death toll looks like it's going to go up because of the shrapnel wounds, so many uh, gravely wounded in these two separate attacks. It seems far away from here, and indeed it, it is. But our athletes are set to go to Russia. What should we be thinking about? Well, in Boston, we really feel these attacks because, as you know, the terrorists who did the, the Boston Marathon uh, killings were from that part of Russia. They were from Chechnya, which is even closer to Sochi than, than Volgograd is. So it's quite, going to be quite a concern for our athletes and especially their families and friends and other spectators who go to the Olympics. Well, they're going to be unprecedented security. Uh, Russia, of course, uh, promising the tightest security ever in the history of the Olympic Games. Uh, so uh, getting a bomb off at a X-ray checkpoint uh, weeks before the Games versus getting something done during the Games, those are two totally separate matters. I mean, our security systems here in the United States, are, uh, people want to do damage. They're probably going to be able to do some damage. Right. Well, Russia is a, a police state still. I mean, just a week ago, Putin celebrated the 96th anniversary of the founding of the KGB. So he still presides over a massive secret police system in Russia, and they still have never been able to get a handle on their terrorist problem, especially coming from that part of Russia, southern Russia and the Caucasus region right near Chechnya. Well, and that part of Russia is disputed, uh, Michael, uh, why? Because this, go this dispute goes back uh, 100 plus years, right? Right. It goes back centuries. It's a cultural dispute. It's a national dispute. It's one of changing borders from the various empires that have ruled that part of the world. But fundamentally right now, it's, a, it's, a, it's an Islamist ideological fight. Uh, first of all, the Chechen, ethnic Chechens are viewed uh, as, as the sort of the, the trash of Russia. Most, most Russians don't like them. They're very hard, they're very easy to profile. They're very, uh, uh, as a group, they're very discriminated against. And so that's really fertile ground for people in a, in a depressed area uh, who are being picked on, who have an ideological grievance and a religious differences, as well as a separatist war for a national identity, all combined into a big fight against Putin. It was just 14 years ago this week that Putin uh, took power in Russia from, from Boris Yeltsin after having precipitated the Second Chechen War by being himself involved in some apartment building bombings to use as an excuse to wage war against Chechnya. So the Chechens have a big beef against Putin personally, as well as the Russian government in general. Uh, Dr. Waller, we really appreciate it. Thanks so much.